Hi, welcome to another episode of the National Local Government Customer Service Network. In this episode, we're going to be talking to Tony and Craig, and they're going to be talking about CPS, which are a gold sponsor to the conference, as well as recruitment. But as you'll find out, not just recruitment, but very specialised recruitment. Tony, morning Craig, gold sponsors to the National Local Government Customer Service Network Conference. I see that you're from CPS and a recruitment company. Tell us a little bit more about the recruitment company first. Well, this is the beautiful part about it, actually, Ron. That's what gets us excited, because in actual fact, we're not a recruitment company at all. Oh. We're completely juxtaposed to what a recruitment company does, but we replicate the services they do using technology. And the whole gist between what we do is we're an extension of basically the HR team directly, yep. and we do it extremely cost-effectively, we do it very efficiently, and we also do it to basically use technology to mimic their actual selection and assessment criteria. So you, so you really work very closely with the organisation that you're working with to ensure they get the right fit for the right person without the thousands of CVs that they need to go through? Absolutely, Ram. Our trick is that we want it to be productive for them, we've got to get the right person, but we want it to be really simple for them in the sense that we don't want them being distracted from their core business. Well that sounds really, really good and I'm sure that that's very effective for you and very effective for council. That's what it is. It's, it's productive, it's efficient for them, but it enables them not to get distracted from the core business. With what you do, what's the difference? The I mean, you say the main difference is they're not distracted, so what's no, the main difference? It's technology. So it's technology. What we actually do is we use technology and we build it around our client's selection criteria. So just as if they were reading a resume, yeah. we get a technology to actually pull out that information from the applicants so that we don't have to read resumes. That sounds fantastic. I'm sure there's a lot more you'll hear about that later on. Um, now tell us a bit more about CPS then, Craig. What's well, CPS? Well, Corporate Protection Services have been involved with uh, Council for well over 10 years now. And um, we're predominantly a risk management business. So when you say risk management, we spoke heavily about risk at yesterday's conference. Yep. So tell us, what kind of risk are you managing? Well, I've got a uh, policing background, so everything we talk about when we talk about risk is from a criminal perspective. So you're really protecting the staff members and protecting the councils? Yeah, that's right. And and even once I got involved with Tony here, um, once again it was a risk management tool, which was uh, employment screening. So, ah, so you screen the employees to make sure that they haven't got a criminal history, things of that nature? Yeah, but even more than criminal history, we, we take a much broader view than that. Um, if the council only wants us to look into their criminal history, sure, that's what we do. But we would prefer to build up a much broader profile of a person than just looking at criminal history. Well, that sounds very, very interesting. I'm sure we'll hear more about that later on. Can I ask you, gentlemen, what is it about this conference that you chose to come to? Why this conference? Well, it's, not, it's very difficult to get this many representatives of an organisation like council in one room together. So this is a magnificent asset for us to be involved with. Uh, it gives us an opportunity in, in one night. You know, I got here late, so I'm able to get around and, and reacquaint with old friends and, uh, and meet new ones. Well, I know you've been involved with um, this organisation for a long, long time. Tell me, what's it like coming conference after conference? Because you seem to enjoy it as well as do business in it. Oh, absolutely. I'm all... <laughs> Why not enjoy business? Well, that makes a lot of sense. And thank you very much for talking to us today, gentlemen. We hope to see you later. Thanks, Thanks Ron. Thank you. So it's my pleasure to introduce to you Tony from Recruiting Screening Services. So without any further ado, Tony, welcome to the stage. Going back one decade into the 90s, I, not unlike yourselves, I had about 50 sales reps working for me. And I had three customer service teams. And the greatest problem was literally, sometimes you had to make hard decisions and we had to let the people go. Instantly what that brought upon us was the problem of having to plug holes. Change my resources, Mary's missing, whatever the case may be, as the managers that came back to you, it fell on our heads and suddenly you're juggling balls again. You're being distracted from your core business and really all you want to do is get off your bike. Well today, what I'm going to show you is very quickly, um, there's two parts to Craig and I. We, we work together, we've known each other for a long time as mates, I run the business called Rethink Recruiting. The Rethink is really important. We are not a recruitment agency, we are nothing like it. Basically, the big difference is, which we're going to bring to awareness, is that we actually use technology to completely mimic the process of recruitment, but we drill a long way down into it so you don't have to read resumes until the final point where we present them to you. 
the tie-in with Craig's world is that, as you know, you all know Craig, Craig's world is very much built around probity, so that when you get to them to the final line, you just want to make sure you get the right person in. It's risk management, which is great. The flip side of having problems with people, though, in terms of them you know, not fitting in with the team or the culture that we've got, there's a hole, but the one that really used to throw my day out, I'd, I'd listen to Barry White coming in the morning, and I'd listen to some pump me up music, I'd be feeling brilliant, you're in there on a Monday morning, it's go, go, go time, and that person you've been developing for the last six months, you've been investing in time with them, walk in the door and they say, listen, it's not you, Tony, it's me. I, I just need to extend myself a bit. I need to look out into the horizons and move on. So what are you saying? You're leaving? Yes, I'm leaving. This is a tremendous opportunity for us both. I, now, I don't know how you guys react to that, but I had difficulties. And I was told through you know, performance reviews over the years that I had control issues, <laughs> disappointment. I didn't take it well, apparently. So they said. And there was a range of responses to it, but most of them finally ended up with tears of one sort or another. Because the reality was my world had just been thrown out of kilter again. Suddenly, instead of concentrating on the business that I'm involved in, I'm now having to worry about plugging holes. Nothing more annoying for us as managers. But that was the reality of that. So, in the context of saying, right, we've now got to fill this hole. What we come to is that you've got to reach out to find applicants. It's because in the old days, the thought of reading hundreds of resumes was an absolute turn off. What you thought I can do with your reach strategy is. This is the marketplace for applicants. I'm reaching here, and I feel good about it, and hopefully I'll get someone. If I don't, I'll just throw my hands in the air, it's too hard, and maybe I'll go out to a recruitment agency and accept that I'm gonna pay a lot of money to get this thing done. What we wanna do with you is say, no, because we've got a tool to manage this process, you're never gonna have to worry about the volume. We wanna reach out this way, but what we really wanna do with you is we wanna do it cost effectively. Now, as I said to you, I ran job boards for the past decade. That tends to enable you to learn a lot about how you can really make them work for you. They spend a lot of money in marketing, positioning themselves so people know about them. It's our trick to make sure we jump and piggyback on that marketing reach. And you can do it. For the sake of, I'm going to show you some case studies shortly, but for the sake of spending about $600 and yes, you can build LinkedIn, you can go into Facebook, we can use the social media. Ideally, we want to use your website, that's the beauty. We suggest you print media if you can in the current world. Hold as a second criteria. I know with local councils, quite often they love the local paper and it is a good resource. But I simply suggest, because we use technology, we know exactly where every applicant comes from. And I can assure you, if you know how to use online, it's much more cost effective and much more rapid. Thanks for watching the broadcast today. We hope you really enjoyed it. We hope you got lots of tips, lots of tricks that you're able to use and take back to your council. And we're really looking forward to seeing you next time on our next broadcast. Bye for now.